This drum is a, the same size as most of the Civil War drums would have been. It's a 16-inch head. The main things that make the drum sound right are that you need to have a skin head on it. If you have a plastic head or any kind of synthetic, the sound doesn't, doesn't come out properly because a skin head that has the difference in, in the texture in the membrane makes a more complicated sound. When it vibrates, it vibrates in a more complicated way and it gives you a more colorful sound. A plastic head or a Kevlar head sounds flat and even and just hurts your ears. It's not appropriate for this kind of, of drumming. Also, the drum shouldn't be muffled too much. This is a little bit smaller than most of our drums we use in the Connecticut Fife and Drum Course with a 16-inch head. Usually we use a 17-inch head. Um, this kind of drum tensioning is used all over the world in African music and in classical Indian music. Tabla drums are tuned essentially the same way. The drum shell makes the resonating chamber. The head has got to be tight. So you have a, a hoop here and a hoop on the bottom and the rope holds it together and when we pull down these ears, as they go up and down, they change the tension on the head. For this kind of drumming we need the drums to be pretty tight. But that's how the, the tension is adjusted with these leather ears that go up and down. The style of drumming started in Switzerland, as close as we can tell, in the 1300s. And we have uh, uh, pictures that were painted showing these drums just like the same, in every general detail, uh, the same. I mean, a shell, the leather ears, the skin heads, the snares on the bottom, going back to the 1400s, a lot of those. So this style of drumming was developed with the two sticks, and the way we hold the sticks has to do with carrying the drum. You carry the drum over a shoulder, so the drum sits at an angle. 
When you're walking across a field like this, your feet have to be able to move up and down a little bit, so the drum has to sit at an angle. And if you hold drumsticks like this, your left hand will tend to hit the rim a lot. You'd have to play this way. And that's very awkward. So by holding the stick this way, your right hand is down, that's easy to hit the drum, but your left hand is raised up higher by holding the stick in this way. That's how we use this grip, why this grip came about. It's not used so much today because with modern marching drums and playing the drum set, you're not forced to keep this drum at that kind of angle, so it's not necessary to use it. But this style of drumming for the last 700 years developed using this approach. And the basic rudiments that we use in the drumming were also developed at least 500 years ago. We don't know exactly. But we know in the 1550s, when the first Swiss drummers came to England, they were taught to play rolls and paradiddles and ruffs and flams, which are the figures that we use. Would you like me to show you briefly how those work? The drum roll, there, there are two kinds of drum rolls in historical drumming. There's the single roll, which isn't used too much, uh, where you play a note with each hand. And then more commonly there's what we call the long roll, where we play two notes in each hand, and then you have to learn to control the bounce of the stick, the rebound off the head, like this. Other rudiments that were used include things like a flam. A flam is a double tap. When you play a single stroke, that gives you one kind of sound, but if you hit both sticks at almost the same time, it makes a little explosion. So that's where the flam comes from. Nowadays we use a lot of softer flams, and we have for the last couple of hundred years, but the flam is originally for this big accent sound. And then sometimes you need faster combinations of notes to make it um, keep the beat from being so boring. And that's where rudiments like the, the paradiddle comes in. And it, a lot of these uh, drum rudiments are titled with what we call onomatopes. In other words, the sound that you make for the name of the rudiment is the sound that it makes. If you roll your R, that's what our, a roll is. A roll, a roll. If you play paradiddle, paradiddle, you get paradiddle, paradiddle. A short roll, a very short roll, is called a rough, rough. The same kind of sound. Phalam, phalam. So that a lot of the names are. Uh, just the sounds of the rudiments. The ratamaku, 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 and so forth. Then a drummer would not learn to read music, but a drummer would learn these different rudiments as Lily is learning. Here, she's one of our drum students. And Lily's learning these rudiments. And once you learn the rudiments, you put them together in combinations, and that makes up the, a drum beat. So drummers would memorize these beats, and if you have about two minutes, I'll give you an example of that. Um, the most common short roll is called the fifth, the seventh stroke roll, which is a roll with seven strokes in it. When that goes fast, it sounds like this. And then we have the flam, and then we have the uh, one called the flam a Q. And a 15 stroke roll is a roll with 15 strokes. And I'll play you a famous beating from the time of the American Civil War. And the whole beating consists of just those four rudiments in different combinations. The 7 roll, the 15 roll, the flam, and the flamicue. So when I was young, I would meet a lot of older drummers who never learned to read music, and they would teach me a beat like this. They'd say, you play two seven rolls, a flam, a flamicue, play a seven, another flam. And if you know the rhythm associated with each rudiment, 
and how the rudiment is usually put into a phrase, you can make sense out of this. We have a, a book published in Massachusetts here in 1818, the Massachusetts Collection of Martial Music, and it has a lot of drum beats in it, and no notation, just these lists of rudiments that you put together, and if you're a drummer, you know how to fit those into a phrase. So I'll show you the Civil War drum beat that we call the Army 2-4, which is just a 2-4 march using just those four rudiments that I mentioned. that beat for all sorts of marches that fit into that meter and that tempo and that's the way this kind of uh, drumming developed through a combination of, of uh, creating this kind of drum and this drumming stick technique and those strings of rudiments that you put together and make up drum beats out of them. Thank you.